Hey guys, welcome to the video for 5.1.2, Charges and Work Potential. We've got two learning objectives today, so let's get right into it. Okay, our first learning objective is to define electric potential and potential difference. Now, some textbooks are going to call this electric potential difference, which is probably more of a natural word, um, because it's actually the difference between electric potentials. But at some point along the way, physicists got lazy and they just said, let's just call it the potential difference. Everybody knows we're referring to the potential difference between two electric potential points. We'll get into the details of that a little bit later. Okay, first off, an electric potential is a voltage and it actually is measured in volts. And this electric potential is probably the best definition for what a voltage actually is. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about this, okay? So it's defined as the electric potential energy. So it's got quite a bit to do with energy per unit of charge at a particular point in the field. The fact that it's a scalar means uh, we don't care about direction. Okay, it's just at that particular point, it has this much energy. There's nothing to do with um, direction. These considered to be zero at infinity. So as you get further and further out, the voltage will drop and at infinity, it will be zero. This next part is very, very important because the work done has to be done by an external force to the field. So to understand that, we'll have a quick brief look at gravity. And so what we're talking about is that we have a positive charge, Q, and there's some force causing this object to move against the field because the natural tendency is that it's going to get repelled away in this direction. But what we're doing is we're going to apply a force and move it towards the field. All right. And so this similar idea comes from our chapter two, when we talked about gravity and the force of gravity, but it's helpful now to think of gravity as a gravitational field. And so we know the earth attracts things towards the center. And so if we think about our typical situation that we did back in mechanics, we talked about doing work against gravity or an object gaining gravitational potential energy. And so again, what we were doing is we know gravity wants to pull it down and we're doing work against it and moving against the field. So it's a very similar idea. Um, this could also work for negative charges as well. And of course, if it was a negative charge, then we would move it away from the field in that direction because the natural tendency is that it's going to move in the direction of the field like that. Uh, the other thing is that all along this particular point here, it would have a consistent voltage, which means if this charge object, I'm going to use the positive one because we tend to talk about positive charges more. So this object could be anywhere along this line okay? and it would have the same voltage. So for example, if this was 500 volts, then anywhere along that line is 500 volts. Similarly, if this was 100 volts out here, then anywhere along that line, so I'm just trying to grab this. Let me just erase that. So anywhere along this line here, it would also be 100 volts, right? So that would go all the way around, all the way around here, right? Okay, so anywhere along that line. Well, we'll get look at a different diagram a little bit later. Okay, uh, learning object number two 
is the potential difference. And remember, uh, just in the back of your mind, this is the electric potential difference. So really, it's the same idea. It's just saying, hey, between two different points, what is the difference of that? And so uh, we could talk about the work at A uh, minus the work from B per unit charge. And we can combine these guys together like this. And that's essentially what we have over here. And this is particularly a special case here where we have equipotential. So the voltage change there is zero. So let's go back and maybe just briefly talk about that. So we mentioned this uh, already is that if this is moving along two different points, so let's give this a reference. So suppose we have point A and B here, A and B. Okay, so if we move from A to B, this is equipotential because it's along the same line. However, the more common case is to move it from, so suppose this was 100 volts here. The more common thing is to move it from this A here to this B over here. So we're going to move it from here to point B here. And if we did do that, then that would be the difference between this, those two. So that would be 500 minus 100. And the difference is 400 volts. That's why they call it a potential difference. Okay, so we have two different voltages. Subtract the two, that's the difference. And that's what we're working out right here. All right, so it could be equal, which means it's along the same radius, or it could be uh, moving from, usually it's the case that it's moving from an outer shell or an outer ring into here. Okay, let's have a look at an example. That much work is done by an external force on an object from position A to B directly against the electric field. And we want to determine the potential difference. So this is just a straight up substitution. 6 times 10 to the negative 6. 5 times 10 to the negative 5. And so the result is 0 0.12. Sorry, that's not joules. That's coulombs, isn't it? joules per coulomb. So we can also write that as 0 0.12 volts. Okay, I'm just going to stop this video here um, because my speakers haven't really been working very well today. I'm going to follow up with a part two video uh, right after this.